What's going on guys? Grace and peace. As many of you know, the media has one common goal, and that's to push their narratives. And I'm all for free press, but one of the things that bothers me the most about these reporters are when they have guests on their show who have opposing or competing thoughts, they do not allow for that person to really express their thought. The whole goal is to force them to agree with their side. They never speak to the arguments. Instead, they reiterate their own bias. And most of the times, it works. Salvation for this sin is the gospel. The only way to really cure that was on the inside is understanding that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so the, to me, on a micro level, it's understanding. It. Oh, and just like that, we lost him. Just like that, we lost him. But thankfully, there are still people who will not bend the knee to the woke culture. You know, human rights situation in parts of Africa and including in your own country. You yourself gained worldwide attention a few years ago when you said there was, quote, no room for homosexuality in Kenyan society. I want to know whether you still stand by that. We have um, Kenyan law. We have Kenyan constitution. We have our tradition, we have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I am very clear, I am very clear that we respect everybody and what they believe in, but we also have what we believe in and we expect to be respected for what we believe in. One of the major issues, and it's a holdover from sort of colonial Victorian, is the issue of sexual preference in many African countries. In Kenya, to be gay, the LGBT community is, is illegal. They just want to have equal rights, the same privacy and equality as all other Kenyans do. Is that something that you aspire to for your country? I want to be very clear, uh, uh, Christiana. Uh, there is, I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. So he's basically saying homosexuality is not agreeable. You've just said that you're kind of trying to thread the needle, that the law says one thing, but you respect everybody's rights. Will a Ruto administration crack down, like many other leaders in Africa, on the homosexual LGBTQ community, or will you allow them their human rights and their civil rights? And this is what the media does so well. It tries to pit people against each other. Here she is trying to get this new Kenyan president to disagree with the former leadership. You know, the Bible says that a nation divided or a house divided cannot stand. If you divide, you can conquer. If you can get some inconsistency within the leadership, then these new policies and these agendas can sneak into the government, into society, and of course it will implode the society from inside out. This is very, very manipulative. But notice his response. I think on that subject, President Kenyatta was spot on. <clears throat> We do not want to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is not a, a big issue for the people of Kenya. When, the people of, when it becomes a big issue for the people of Kenya, the people of Kenya will make a choice. As it is now, we are grappling with five million young people who do not have jobs, four million people who are hungry, and that is my concern. That is the focus of the people of Kenya at the moment. When the issue you have discussed about homosexuality and the rights of LGBT will come, the people of Kenya will make a choice and we will respect the choice of the people of Kenya. For now, Christian Amanpour. You see, this is the misconception. We think that because something is an issue in our country, that it's an issue worldwide. And it's not an issue in every single solitary country. 
These countries in Africa have bigger fish to fry. They have bigger issues like poverty, like poor education, like needing fresh water. In some of these countries, they don't have any food to eat. Those are bigger issues that necessitate immediate attention. These other things that we hold so dearly in America are not issues for other nations. Because what you've categorically just stated is that this is not an issue for us, for the Kenyan people, yes. and you don't think that the idea of their privacy, their equality, their rights Christian, is important. This is, uh, but it's a global issue right now. It's, it's important to them where they are. Why is it I am saying to you that it as is not of the important to me as the leader of 49 million Kenyans and after if you want to ask me my personal opinion. What is your personal after opinion? After I finish my process, I can talk about my personal opinion. But as the leader of the people of the Republic of Kenya, I, I represent that which our people are desirous to be. And isn't that the foundation of every democracy? The person whom is put in that position represents the people. The vast majority of people do not agree with that lifestyle. Yet, this small percentage of people, they're dictating what we see on TV. They're dictating what we see on movies. They're dictating the narratives and the agendas being pushed throughout the media. We're being forced to bow down to the altar of the woke culture. But one day soon, that altar will be utterly destroyed. But the question is, will we bow down or resist to the pressure? Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were told to bow down and worship this idol and they refused but were thrown into the furnace think about that what if the president of the united states asked you or demanded that you bow down to this altar of woke culture would you do that i love the fact that this kenyan president even disagreed with former president barack obama government gets in the habit of pe treating people differently those habits can spread and not harming anybody the idea that they are going to be treated differently or abused because of who they love is wrong. Just like President Obama, I think we also need to be able to speak frankly about some of these things. And the fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families, these are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. So it's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves do not accept. This is why I repeatedly say that for Kenyans today, the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. We want to focus on other areas that are day-to-day -day living for our people, the health issues that we have discussed with President Obama, these are critical. Issues of ensuring inclusivity and of women, these are the key focuses. Maybe once, like you have, overcome some of these challenges, we can begin to look at new ones. But as of now, the fact remains that this issue is not really an issue that is on the foremost mind of Kenyans, and that is the fact. It's great to see that there are still some people in high positions of power still standing firm and resisting the pressure to bow down to woke culture. This is something that we need to recognize and lean into because as we're being force fed this information on the media every single day, we cannot become desensitized because when you tell somebody a lie over and over and over again, people will soon believe it. So it is our responsibility to preach the truth, to preach the gospel of Christ over and over and over and over again. We must not let the media push their agenda and out preach us as believers. We have an agenda as well that is making Christ known, that is pushing the gospel and pushing back the forces of darkness. Let this inspire you to stand firm irrespective of what position you are in life. Never compromise your convictions. Stand firm on God's word. It is our final authority. And one day, God will come back and rule 
and set everything straight. If you enjoyed this video and you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video. I'll be back next week with another one. This is Pastor Frederick. This is by the book. Peace.